today we're going to be looking at Thunder Alley from GMT Game. It's a NASCAR uh, racing game um, and a fairly simple game, but that still offers a lot of strategy. It's quite interesting, actually. So uh, we're going to look at how to play the game. Um, but first, we'll, let's talk about what you're trying to do. Unlike most racing games, it's not about finishing first, but it's rather having your stable of cars which varies depending on the amount of players, finish as high as possible because what's going to happen is each position will give you a certain amount of points. So it's the total of the points that matter. So even if you finish in first, but then your next car finishes in sixth and seventh, the player who finishes in second, third, and fourth, for example, will win even though he didn't win the race. It doesn't matter. He has cars that are rated much higher than your cars. Um, so as such, the game is a game for two to seven players. And depending on the amount of players, you'll be racing three to six cars. Um, the more, always trying to get about the same amount of cars on the racetrack, uh, anywhere between 15 and 21 cars. So it gets very crowded. So that's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so before we start, let's look at a few components. Uh, the very first component and the most important component probably is the car you're racing or the cars you're racing. Cars are a very, very simple piece. They have two uh, important pieces of, uh, of information on them. They have a number because all your up to six cars have unique numbers so that uh, when they take damage, they can go on the, uh, the stable card and you know which car has damage. And they have two sides. They have a light side and they have a dark side. And that's simply used to indicate whether or not the car has moved during the turn. Uh, during each turn, the cars will move exactly once. That doesn't, well, the cars will be activated exactly once. They can move multiple times. And I'll explain that in a few seconds. The other thing that the players will get is simply their stable cars, which have all their cars on it and spaces for the temporary damage they can get when they move, the permanent damage they can get also when they move, and any first uh, turn leader uh, tokens that they might get during the race. So that's the cars. Uh, the next part is the racing track. It, the game comes with four racing tracks. I have Verg's uh, Grove uh, up on the table right now and all the maps are basically uh, follow the same structure. Uh, the maps themselves, you have obviously the starting ending line. You have a yellow line that indicates the apron and the apron is the inside lane that you're going to use for pitting. Uh, when you're racing, you're not allowed being on that uh, track. It's only when you're pitting that you're going to be on that track and then you're going to come back out, but more on that later. Uh, you also have the outside walls. Again, uh, like regular NASCAR, you obviously cannot get out of the track, so that's kind of important. And then each, uh, each space can only contain one car, and this is known as a sector as well. The outside two lanes are known as the starting, um, the starting lanes so that at the beginning of the game they're numbered from 1, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on and so forth up to 21 and uh, anytime there's a yellow flag we'll restart the cars in the same way but more on that later. The next part is uh, the, the cards themselves. It's a card driven game. Uh, to move a car you need to play a card um, and there's two types of cards per side. There's an event card that's only drawn once at the end of every turn. We'll get back to those and there's the the racing cards that the players will will get at the start of every turn. Um, here's two cards, and uh, let's look at them really briefly. You're going to get an amount of cards that is equal to the amount of cars you have at the start of the race. So even if you lose cars during the race, you're still going to get the same amount of cards. And actually, that could be part of your uh, tactic, uh, because obviously, the less car you have to move and the more cards you have, the more choices you have. But you know, at the same time, you're missing a car. So you're going to get uh, an amount of card at the beginning of every turn that's equal to the number of cars you had at the beginning of the game plus one. On a card, uh, that they, there's a whole bunch of different cards, but there's a few things that are very important. Uh, at the bottom of the card, and I'm going to mention it briefly, is what's ca called the, um, the team bar. The team bar is only used whenever to set up the game, and it's also used whenever there's a tie between cars uh, for certain conditions. Apart from that, it's not used for the rest of the game, so it's nice It's nice to know that it's there and it exists, but it's not something that you have to worry about during the game. What's really important, though, is the two numbers here. The top number is your regular movement points that you're going to get. 
whenever you move, and the second number is when you're coming out of pitting. I'll explain pitting later, but so you get, if you, I was to play this, get this card, I would get six movement points. The next thing that's important to see is the color, the name of the card, which is, you know, always good for uh, flavor, and the color. The color indicate what kind of damage you take. Most cards will give you damage when you play them, and only to the card that's playing them. There's some white cards, and the white cards means that you get no damage, so as such, they're very good. But most of the cards have a color, meaning that your car will take a token of that color at the end of its movements. And as you can see here, uh, we can see eight the, the eight different colors of tokens, and there's two different sizes. The small ones, which are temporary damage that you'll be able to get rid of by pitting, and then you have the permanent damage, which are the big ones uh, that you can't get rid of uh, during the game. Uh, and we'll get back to damage, but damage is not good. Too much damage, your car uh, will eventually slow down, and if way too much damage, and the car will have to retire from the race. So, so you have the movement, you have the color to indicate the kind of damage you take, you have the type of movement. There's four types of movements. We'll, I'll explain that in a little bit uh, in, in detail a little later on, but it all indicates whether or not you're bringing other cards with you when you're moving. And then you have special rules that can change from card to card. So, and that's it for the components. look at how to play now that we know about the components. So simply put, at the start of every turn, we're going to start with the first player that plays one card, followed by the second the player to his left, and so on and so forth until uh, everybody's uh, activated all their cards. So basically, you know that the turn is over when all the cards on the map went from one color, either white or black, to the other color. So how does that work? Well, we're going to be playing uh, the different cards for different types of movements. So let's look at the different type of movements and let's look with the, at the simplest movement first. The very first movement we're gonna be looking at is the solo movement. The solo movement is very simple. It means that the car moves by itself and no other car moves with it. So in the case of this charge card, I would be moving seven, I'd have seven movement points to move my car with. So if I have the black cars, for example, uh, well, let's make it simple. If I have the red 77 I want to, to um, activate, well, the red 77 would simply go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 off the map for you, but, you know, still on the map here. Um, because every space that it moves forward or laterally counts for one point. Um, but you don't only, you, you know, it's nice when you have space to do such a thing. But let's say number 5 wanted to use the charge. Uh, well, what it would do is it could move from here laterally onto the 41 or down into the 66 towards the apron and spend more movement point to do this kind of move. So let's say uh, it, what would make more sense is to go down, so push the 66 out of the way, so spend two points doing a lateral move into another car, so that it would push the 66 one back, it would take its place, and then it would have to push the 53 that's in front of it. Uh, forward for three points every time. So one, two, three, one, two, three, that's six, seven, eight. Well, it wouldn't be able to do that. It'd be able to go up to here only because it had seven points and that's the most it can do. That's solo movement. If the coast is clear, you can, you can move laterally as many times as you want. You can move forward as many times as you want. The only rule about movement, and this goes for all the cards, is that you cannot revisit a space the same space twice, basically preventing you from going one, two, three, four, five, six in order to block other cars. So that's not legal. Well, okay, fine, would be flipped over. The next, the other three movements all use a very sim similar principle, which is the principle of linkage. A car is considered to be linked to another car when they're in the same lane. And depending on the type of movement, it's either the cars in front of it, behind it, or both sides. So we'll look at the very first type, uh, the very first card of that type, uh, which is the draft movement. Draft movement has a very simple reminder on the card. The two yellow arrows mean every car behind it and every car in front of the car uh, are linked to the car. So that would mean that 
the moment I activate that car, let's say I'm activated number 25, it is automatically linked to number 88 and both cars would move together. Drafting move is very simple. You're allowed to move laterally as much as you want before you start your movement. Uh, but once you start moving forward with a draft movement, you cannot move laterally anymore. So again, uh, I play this card. I'm either linked right away with the 88 or I can say, screw that and go, okay, I'm gonna move laterally into this space for one because there's nobody there. And now I'm gonna start my forward movement. So all these cars, all the cars in front of the 25 would start moving with it for one, two, three, four, and five. So as you see, it can be very efficient. And even, even if number 20, for example, right here was flipped over, it would still be moving because it is part of that convoy. Uh, the funny thing about drafting is also the fact that uh, only the car that's moving, that's active, chooses where it can go. All the other cars have to follow and can't do anything about any of the movements. Let's just leave them there and 25 is left over. So that's drafting. Um, the next movement is very, very similar. It's the pursuit movement. Uh, it's almost the same thing as the draft movement, except that it's only the cars that are in front of the car uh, that are activated and that, that, not that activated, that move along with the activated car. And again, the same thing. I can move as much laterally as I want before I start moving. Once I start moving forward, I need to keep on moving forward. One other thing that I did not explain with the draft, but it's true also with the pursuit movement, is the concept of, let's say number 88 started moving. So I move, uh, 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 66, sorry. Let's move the 66 forward uh, for the pursuit movement. Now there's cars in front of it. These cars are now considered to be linked to number 66. So they would start moving along with it. I wouldn't have I wouldn't have to spend three movement points because they're all linked together, unlike the solo movement. So it's true also of the draft movement that the linking can happen during movement. And once they're linked, they're, they cannot unlink. The next type of movement is very similar again. It's the lead movement. It's anybody behind the car or pulled along with that car as they move forward. Cars in front of it are not considered to be linked. The main, main difference with the lead movement is that cars need to be, you can't link during your move, they have to be linked at the beginning of your move. So for example, if number 42 was to move, even if it moved here and then started moving forward, number 70 would not be linked. However, if number 71 was to move and decided to move laterally, number 23 would take its place because they're, they are linked at the beginning of the turn. And most probably number 70 would also be linked because uh, it's a conversion link. So then number 71 can move here and then 23 would move there and so on and so forth. The nice thing about the lead movement is that you can do as many um, lateral movement as you want, but all the cars will follow you all the time. So that's basically all there is with, to do with movement. Uh, uh, a little detail that I didn't really do right here has to do with the current turn leader. Current turn leader is always a card that's in front. So uh, if number 41 here was to pass number uh, 77, well, let's move back a bit because I don't think that's on camera. Let's move things full backwards a bit. Let's say number 77 has the current lead and 53 was to move here, it would grab the current lead, the current turn leader. What's important about the current turn leader is the idea that if a car, let's say 42 is the current leader and somehow managed to get all the way around and is behind these cars, the moment it passes cars, these two cars are considered to be lapped. At the end of the turn, when all the cars have been activated, any cars with the lap token on them will be removed from the race. We'll go back on that when we talk about the, uh, the turn end, but for now, keep that in mind. The other thing also, I had mentioned this earlier on, is the whenever I play a card, if unless it's a white card, I have to add that type of damage token onto the card for the card that I just activated. 
using that card. If the car has three tokens, below two to uh, three tokens, you don't, it doesn't have any effect. But if the car has three token, four token, or five token on it at the start of its turn, the move will be reduced by three points, four points, or five points. Uh, which means that if I played a six card and I have five tokens on it, my car will only move one space uh, during the turn because that's all that's left. Six minus five is one. If the car starts with six token, the car is considered to be uh, to have broken down and therefore is removed from the race. So the car would be removed from the map, uh, put back on the player's um, stable card, and the smallest... Um, the smallest award that's left would be given to that car. Uh, yeah, so, and that's basically what a turn is. The turn will end when all the cars are flipped over and then we will seg into the end of the turn. Okay, so let's assume all our cars have moved. So we all started on, on their dark side. Now they're on their white side. The turn leader is this car. These two cars have not been lapped. So very simple, what do we do? The very first thing we do is we look at who the current turn leader and that car will get a token, which is the turn leader token. And oops, we'll get the turn leader token. That token is worth one victory point to that car at the end of the game. And then once that's done, we're simply gonna do the very, very mean event cards. Event cards are, there's only one a turn that's turned over, but they range, they can do many, many different things. Uh, there's two aspects that are very important to the card. The very first one is on the top corner, there's different colored flag, uh, either red, green, or yellow. Green just means the race keeps on going and nothing happens. Yellow flag, which mean, will mean that right after uh, right after the event is resolved, we'll do a yellow flag restart. So that's gonna compress, like all the cars are gonna be put back in their starting position uh, based on where the leader currently is. And then there's a the dreaded red cards, the red flag cards, which can indicate an end of game uh, if both of them come out. So there's 26 cards. If one of them comes out, nothing happens much. If the second one comes out, the game is over immediately and you score the cars in, their or in the order they're in. Um, the longer the game goes, the more likely this is going to happen. It's happened in the very first game that we played. Uh, you know, two cars out of 26, you do the math, it's something like 7% chance of this happening in any given game. So, okay, so all the other cards simply say stuff like the car who has the most of this will get this or any type of X type of damage will transform in Y type of damage. One that we see quite often is every card that has a transmission, a, uh, a, a temporary uh, transmission problem becomes a permanent uh, uh, transmission uh, damage. So therefore you cannot remove that type of damage anymore. Whereas before you could have pitted and the, the damage would have been over. So let's cover really quickly the, the yellow flag, which can happen, which has the, you know, a 33% a chance of happening. Let's say, a yellow flag came up, and this is our current leader. So simply put, again, we're gonna re, uh, reuse the the same way uh, as it was at the beginning of the game. We're gonna take the top two lanes of the, the track, and we're gonna be placing the cars back in order with the car that's on the inside of the track being the car that's ahead all the time. So the leader stays where it is. Car number two goes here. This would be car number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then the race, we would restart the race from there. So yellow flags could be really good if you're very, very far behind. It could be a pain in the ass if you were all the way at the beginning because suddenly you're all packed together. Uh, and then there's pitting. pitting depending if it's a yellow flag or not, has different connotation. Pitting, if there's no yellow flag, you simply go back. Uh, starting with the first player, you declare if you want to pit your cars. Uh, any card that's pitted goes to the apron. On a regular situation on the green flag, would just go to the apron and move back five spaces. And then next turn would start 
but would use the smaller number uh, to unpit itself and has to move um, has to move laterally first and ignores any kind of other thing. The only thing you use for the, that car is the smaller number. On a yellow flag pit, simply the cars go down into the apron, then you shuffle all the cars uh, and then those cars will go behind the other cars. Once you pit, the big thing about pitting is that you remove any kind of temporary damage that are on the cars. So suddenly the cars can probably finish the race. That's always a good, good thing to pit. Um, so once that's done, you simply establish who's the first player because if I pitted my car that was in first place, I did get my award for, for leading, but at the same time he moves backwards. So that car would no longer be the first player car. Establish who the first player is, uh, any car that was lapped that had a lap token on it, as I said before, would be removed from the race. Uh, and then players simply discard whatever cards that they have in hand. If they want to discard them, they can keep them if they want. And then we refill our hands up to the amount of cards we had at the beginning of the game plus one. So if we were playing in this case, where we're playing with one, two, three, four, five cards each, we would get our hands up to six cards again. Rinse and repeat until the finish line is crossed by the leading car uh, the amount of times that the lap, uh, the amount of lap that the race is. So in this case, in, uh, for this race, it's two laps. So, And then the moment the lead car crosses the finish line, the game is over. We finish all, like, well, all the cars need to be activated and then the game's over. We tally up our, our awards and whomever has the most points win. And that's it.